So we will now continue our example of a linear sequential circuit. And the circuit we had is the following, where we had two input signals that we call x1 and x2. We had two output signals that we call u1 and u2. And then we had three state variables that we call q1, q2 and q3. Then we also have our next state variables, which are q1 plus, we have q2 plus, and then we have q3 plus. And then we wrote our matrices A, B, C, and H. And these matrices determines how our current state and input will influence our next state and our output. So the matrix A will map our current state to our next state. Our matrix B will map our input to the next state. Our matrix C will map our current state to the output. And our matrix H will map our input to the output. And looking at our sequential circuit, we could just determine these four matrices. And what we want to do now is to find the reduced form of these four matrices. So we have already seen this theorem which says that the reduced form of A, B, C and H can be given as A reduced is T times A times R, B reduced is T times B, C reduced is C times R and H reduced is just the matrix H. And here the matrix T will be the first K linearly independent rows of the diagnostic matrix K and R is a right inverse of the matrix T. And our diagnostic matrix is the PR by R matrix K, which is given by first the matrix C, then C times A, then C times A squared, and up until C times A to the R minus one. And when we have this diagnostic matrix, we look at the rank of the matrix, and then this will immediately give us our matrix that we call T, and it will also then give us the matrix that we call R. So our first step is to find this diagnostic matrix. So first we note that R is equal to three because we have three memory elements, or we have three state variables in our sequential circuit, which means that our matrix K here is given by the matrix C, then C times A, and then C times A squared. So this is the form of our matrix K. So just looking at our matrix C here, we will have 1, 0, 1, then 0, 1, 0. So this is the first two rows of our matrix. Then the next two rows, so let's now compute the matrix C times A here. This will be equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, times our matrix A, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And if we make this computation, we can see that the first row of our result is the sum of the first and the third row in our A matrix. So here we will have 1, 0, 1. And then we can see that the second row here is just the middle row of our A matrix. So this will be 1, 1, 1. So let us just fill this out in our K matrix. So we have 1, 0, 1, and then we have 1, 1, 1. And then for the final two rows in our K matrix, let us compute C times A squared, which is the same as C times A times A. So C times A we already have, one, zero, one, 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 one. And then we multiply this by our A matrix, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one. And here we can see Again, that the first row of our result is the sum of the first and the third row of our A matrix. So this will be 1, 0, 1. 
and then the second row of our result will be the sum of all the three rows in our A matrix. So this will be 0, 1, 0. So we can now fill out our K matrix again, which will be 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0. So this matrix here is our K matrix. We have now found a diagnostic matrix. So what we want to do next is to find the rank of this matrix. And we can do this by Gaussian elimination, but here we can very easily see that the first two rows are linearly independent. The third row is the same as the first one. The fourth row is the same as the first one plus the second one. The fifth row is the same as the first and the sixth row here is the same as the second row. So clearly the rank of this matrix K here, the diagnostic matrix, is equal to two. And from this it follows that K here in our theorem is equal to two. So already now we know that we can find a reduced form of our linear sequential circuit such that we only need two delay elements or two state variables instead of three that we have in the given linear sequential circuit. If we continue to find this reduced form, our matrix T is now given by the first two linearly independent rows of our diagnostic matrix K, so our matrix T is given by 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Because it, this is exactly these two rows that we have here in our diagnostic matrix. Our next step is to find the matrix R. And R is a right inverse of T. So we have that T times R should be equal to our identity matrix I. And since T now is a two by three matrix and I is then a two by two matrix because this needs to be a square matrix, then we know that R is in this case a three by two matrix. So we have three rows and two columns in our matrix R. A simple way to find this right inverse R is to write our matrix T as the two matrices M, N, like this. And then we know that if we write R as the inverse of the matrix M here, and then we fill by zeros, then we will have, have a right inverse of T. Because when we multiply T times R here, we will get the identity matrix I. And M here is a square matrix, so this is a two by two matrix. And M here, if we look at the matrix T, M will be equal to one, zero, zero, one. And here finding the inverse of M is trivial because we already have the identity matrix as M. So M inverse is here also one, zero, zero, one. So this gives us immediately that our R matrix is one zero zero one and then we fill with zeros so this is our r matrix the right inverse of t so we have found our matrices t and r and now we find the reduced form of our matrices and we start by the matrix a reduced which is given by t times a times R and T here is one zero one zero one zero our matrix A is zero 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 one 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 zero one and our matrix R here is one zero zero one zero zero and if we start by multiplying T and A what we have here is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is T times A. And then we have this times our matrix R, which is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And if we do this matrix multiplication, we get 1, 0, 1, 1. 
and then we have the reduced form of the B matrix which is T times B which equals 1 0 1 0 1 0 and this is the T matrix and then we have our B matrix which is 0 1 0 0 1 0 and this multiplication will be 1 1 0 0 and the reduced form of the C matrix is given by C times R which equals 1 0 1 0 1 0 this is our C matrix and then our R matrix is 1 0 0 1 0 0 which will be equal 1 0 0 1 and then finally the reduced form of our H matrix will just be our matrix H because removing states will not affect how the input will influence the output. So this will just be 1, 0, 0, 1 as we had before. So we have now found the reduced form for all our matrices A, B, C and H. So now when we have the reduced form of our matrices, we can rewrite our expressions as Q1 plus Q2 plus equals the reduced matrix A times the current state Q1, Q2 plus our reduced matrix B times our input variables x1 and x2 which can be written as the reduced matrix A is 1 0 in the first row so we have this as Q1 plus and then the reduced matrix B is 1 1 in the first row so we have x1 plus x2 and for Q2 plus we have the second row of the reduced A matrix being 1, 1. So we have this as Q1 plus Q2. And the second row of the B reduced matrix is 0, 0. So we have no dependency on the input here for the next state Q2. And similarly for the output U1 and U2 this can be written as the reduced C matrix times our current state Q1 Q2 plus our H matrix reduced times the inputs X1 X2 and if we look at the reduced C matrix the first row will be 1 0 so this will be equal to Q1 and for the reduced 8 matrix it will also be 1 0 so this will be plus X1 and for the second row of the reduced C matrix we have 0 1 so here we have Q2 and then we also have 0 1 for the reduced H matrix so here we have plus X2 so these are our new expressions for the next state variables and for the output variables and how they depend on the current state and the input. So let us just summarize what we have done here. We started by finding the A, B, C and H matrices for our linear sequential circuit. We found the diagnostic matrix K. From this matrix we found the matrices T and its right inverse R and then we computed the reduced form of our matrices A, B, C and H and from this reduced form we can now write new expressions of the next state and the output and how it depends on the current state and the input. And using these expressions we can now write our new linear sequential circuit which only has two state variables. So we have here the state variable Q1 and the next state variable Q1 plus and we have the state variable Q2 and its next state variable Q2 plus. 
and the q1 plus variable we can see is a sum of the q1 variable coming in here in the XOR gate the x1 variable coming in here and the x2 variable coming here and this is exactly what we have here in our expression for q1 plus and q2 plus is the sum of here q2 and what comes into this gate which is q1 and this is exactly what we have here in this expression and for our variable u1 this is the sum of x1 and q1 which we have here which also says here in our expression that we have q1 plus x1 and for our u2 output this will be the sum of q2 which comes into this xor and also x2 which also comes into this xor here and this is also what we have in our expression here so this concludes this example where we wanted to find the reduced form of a given linear sequential circuit.